Go picking another farm. More sheds. More barn dust. Back to Oklahoma today. Picking up a 72 Impala Custom Coupe. This is a car that I bought on an online auction. The place here used to be a repair shop. And this was a car that laid out back for a while. And now that the shop owners are tired, it was time to sell. I spotted this car, really liked it because it's just almost identical to one that I used to have that I sold. Same year, same body, same paint color. Even had the 400 V8. You could get these with a 400 small block or the 402 big block. They also badged as a 400. Mine would swap to 454 into. This one has the white interior, which is really about the only difference from mine. Other than that, and the roof is good. Mine had a bit of rust from the vinyl top. First look, it's about what I thought from the pictures. Gonna need restored, but at 50 years old, these cars don't really grow on trees. This car had keys, but unfortunately, Something's kind of broke and messed up in there. I don't know if it got rust from water coming in from the broken windshield or what happened, but anyway, you slice it. I've got to get into the steering column so that I can unlock it to steer. I brought tools for that, so I'll show you that process. Horn pad is held on with Phillips screws. Those come out. Big nut on the steering wheel. Pull it off. Next, set up the steering wheel puller. Twist, 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 and it pops. Remove the three Phillips screws from the cover plate. I don't have the lock plate tool. The lock plate has kind of a foot like this and a stud that goes through it. You crank that stud down onto here, pushes that plate down, and there's a lock ring that comes off. Dear Mr. Good Pliers, a Phillips screwdriver is not a punch. Correct. Dear Mr. Good Pliers, a crescent wrench is not a hammer. Correct. All right, you can see that pushes down. This car's a little different having sat and got some corrosion. Most of the time that pin will spring back, but in this case that corrosion is holding it down. It's actually hitting the screw that I threaded back in. I'll take those back out, but we'll see. Usually if the column doesn't have corrosion from a broken windshield, you either have to put that lock plate remover, pull that lock plate, or you can slide a piece of a can between there. I'll usually tape it to the column so it doesn't come out. I always put this on here so that while you're moving the car, in case you grab that wheel, doesn't come off in your hands. Uh, 
Now we got her where she'll steer. Okay, now the locking steering column doesn't allow the shifter to be released, so we got to do that from underneath the car. There are several places where this shifter linkage is put together, so just whichever one a guy can reach. Undo this adjuster bolt. There's a little curved spring washer on there. Kind of an important piece you don't want to lose. What you sniffing, Sniffy? Two clicks to neutral. Boom, done. And now it's time we put up the tires. That's not going to work. Dear Mr. Good Pliers, a crowbar is not a shovel. Your improper use of tools raises concerns. Not stupid if it works. Now the trunk. Womp womp. Two tires. Now there is a fender skirt. One's better than none. And 67 Camaro. Somebody's smashed her flat.
Dude. Go picking another farm. More sheds. More barn dust. Tag parts. Yeah, I already got that one. Okay. It's kind of neat, isn't it? Yep. Acme, purchased new by Wiley E. Coyote. Tractor seat. Model A. Panel. I want to say this could be a visor, but I'm not sure. and trans are sold. Old Plymouth wheel. And letters. Oh Take them home and lay them out and see what they spell. Bunch of belts, come on, belts and shit in there. But there's some small cat here. There's a, more, a small AC motor in there. Dog. <laughs> Scared me to death. I didn't know what was coming up beside me. Yeah. I don't see what's in there. In that cat. I imagine you're going to be this. Just some leftovers. Oops.
Twister. Couple Chevy pickup door panels. These bent sucker rods would make nice sign hangers. High value. As much as an old Core 350 TBI motor could be. Antique shop light. Back home, here's a quick rundown of all the things I picked from the barn. Got a easy bend tailpipe rack, piece of white painted steel. I was probably gonna hand paint a sign on it, maybe beware or danger or something. Set of wood letters, maybe. Gotta lay them out and see if they spell anything of significance or substance. 
Got the steel Oliver tractor seat, Old City service can. Got a four cylinder magneto with a gear drive. And then these are two split dwarf. Looks like they're two cylinder. They've got the little flat cam drive there. Green paint on them, could be John Deere. Not quite sure. Then I got a Model A, I believe that's a sun visor, old accessory piece. And the front grill apron. Then the bench seat is 55 to 59 Chevy pickup. Those seem to sell pretty well. Guys are always restoring those trucks and looking to put stock seats back in them. Cool old period 70s, 60s painted, pinstriped door panels for that same era truck. The old license plates and then this old chrome grill molding. Those are always kind of fun for me to sit and go through the picture books and identify. Got the old Alamite Lubster, 40s, 50s Plymouth wheel rim with the hubcap clips. Guys are always looking for stock wheels. 67 Chevy hubcap and a 58 Plymouth. I like finding those 58 Plymouth caps because guys want to build their Christine cars and that's the stock cracked look per the movie as the original hubcaps. So those always sell. And then up here I got a big piece of rope. I've always had kind of a desire to make a folk art anchor and I was looking for a big thick piece of rope to tie around that. The triangle pieces, I thought they might make kind of interesting sign hangers. Some of this stuff, if it's an interesting shape or it's an interesting material, I just pick it up. I don't necessarily have to have an idea of what in mind I'll do with it, but sometimes it just sits around and then later on I find an idea and I'm glad I picked it up. And then last piece is this pretty cool triangular shop light. Neat old industrial lighting that would be something good to restore. Put a modern light inside and hang it up and have a cool vintage look. Over here we have the 73 Impala Custom Coupe. This car is kind of the sister car to the 72. gold metallic paint but it was actually more of a real pretty orange color before it faded out. I got this car from a friend of mine. He had had the car a long long time. His very first car was a 76 Buick and so he parked that one when it rusted out and he put the Buick rims on this Impala and used the steering column out of the Buick. These are a pretty popular car right now down in Atlanta and Houston and Florida. This is the up and coming collector car. You see there is a bit of rust in the quarter panels, but it's not really beyond what a aftermarket skin will cover. That's just kind of one thing a guy's got to be prepared with on one of these cars that's coming on 50 years old, half a century of wear and rust and everything. You're going to expect a little bit of body work on them. It does have some scratches, scrapes on the front fender there. Fender itself is saveable, but a guy would want to replace that extension. This car is missing the original engine, but everything else pretty much is there to put a small block Chevy back in. Got your transmission, your exhaust, all the stuff. Take a quick look inside. Had that striped cloth interior. Steering column does need replaced. It's not original and it's floppy. Pretty basic crank window car. Well, I'm trying. I don't think I can spell anything short of G or I could have garage. Maybe I should buy a vowel. 